The sign welcoming visitors to Skykomish proudly proclaims its great northern roots. This remote community is located roughly 50 miles east of Everett, Washington. It was identified by railroad surveyors as the first flat spot west of Stevens Pass, and for a while carried that name. The rails came in 1892, along with another name, Maloney's Siding. The following year, a post office was established, and the flat spot on the west side of the mountains was incorporated as Skycomish. Once a busy helper base on the GN, and later the BN, it continues into the 21st century as a base for maintenance of way. A Y track exists near the east end of the small town, and the 8,949 foot siding is commonly used by dispatchers for holding eastbound trains until they have a clear shot to the summit of Stevens Pass. This morning, an eastbound coal train is waiting for two westbounds this approaching manifest and Amtrak 7. BNSF 7591 West leads another Spokane to Everett Manifest through town. Skykomish sits at an elevation of 928 feet and is situated at the bottom of the 2.2% climb up the west side of Stevens Pass. When the railroad was first completed, a series of eight switchbacks zigged and zagged over the mountains with grades of up to 4% until the first Cascade Tunnel was completed in 1900. The historic GN Depot was built in 1894 and served passengers until the 1950s. It replaced the original depot, which was nothing more than a boxcar. The building has been moved more than once in its lifetime and currently resides on the south side of the tracks. A small-scale live steam railroad runs around the depot, but its tracks are currently invisible, buried in the snow. A late-running Amtrak 7 glides through the wintry scene after safely crossing Stevens Pass. Tomorrow's train won't be so lucky. As we filmed these scenes in January of 2020, a winter storm warning had been issued for much of the Pacific Northwest, bringing several new feet of snow to Stevens Pass and significant accumulations to the foothills. In Skykomish, that prediction seems to be coming true. What little evidence there might be left of a turntable and roundhouse is cloaked in a blanket of white. Former GN SD9 number 599 quietly weathers the storm while it waits an uncertain fate. 
In the distance, the lights of BNSF 9001 West appear after limping over Stevens Pass. The 9001 had mechanical issues at Merritt, and two engines off an eastbound were added to the point so this crew could continue to Seattle. BNSF 7181 and 8210, both GEs, aid the ailing SD-70 ACE on the point of a vehicle train. Many towns throughout the West, both big and small, owe their very existence to the railroad. Although many have forgotten that heritage, Skycomish has held on to its identity. A great northern-themed herald is proudly displayed on the city's utility truck, which has been pressed into snow service. It plows East Railroad Street past buildings that are a throwback to the town's heyday in the early part of the 20th century. The nearly 100-year-old Cascadia Hotel has welcomed guests, rain or shine, since 1922. A snowplow of a different kind sits at the ready on a house track near the west switch of Skycomish. This former GN snow dozer was rebuilt in Vancouver, Washington in about 2009 and dressed in Burlington Northern's Cascade Green. As the snow continues to accumulate on the mountain, it should be just a matter of time before the dozer gets the call. The next morning at 6.30 a.m., we return to Skycomish and find the town is without power. Numerous downed trees from wet heavy snow have taken their toll on both the town and the railroad. Flashing lights on nearby signal huts indicate they are operating on auxiliary batteries. Two red eyes mark the west switch of Skycomish, and soon they are replaced with the blinding light of what turned out to be the only freight we would see this day. More eastbound empty coal buckets for the Powder River Basin.
A lone GE gently leans on the rear drawbar as the crew slowly brings the train to a stop just clear of the 5th Street North Crossing. The plan is to meet Amtrak 7, which is running late out of Leavenworth. A plan that will soon be changing as Amtrak finds itself stranded at Scenic while another winter storm bears down on Stevens Pass. For the next eight and a half hours, nothing else moves through Skycomish. By 2 p.m., the winter storm has intensified with gale force winds and blowing snow. Amtrak is stuck at the west switch of Scenic. Down trees have traffic stopped on Highway 2. A relief engineer was high railed up to the stranded train earlier in the day, and now the locomotives from the snowdozer have been called to bring a relief conductor as well. This crew was instructed to take chainsaws along and would end up cutting their way through the downed trees to reach the stranded Amtrak 7 and again cut their way back. The loss of power also meant that switch heaters weren't working, furthering delays. The NSF used an army of gas generators to power signal bungalows between Bering and Scenic. This one powers a grade crossing near the east switch of Skykomish. It's after 3.30 p.m. when BNSF 279 and 291 return to Skykomish and enter the siding. BNSF Seattle East Dispatcher noted over the radio they had lost the day's battle with the storm. The two EMD SD-75Is would not go back to the snowdozer, but would be called on to shuttle crews for the next couple of days. With the loss of signals and powered switches, and with all the maintenance of way trying to keep the railroad open, the Empire Builder was required to operate on track and time authority with limits between West Scenic and West Skycomish. The radio crackles with activity between maintenance of way the Seattle East Dispatcher and Amtrak. Yeah, uh, Webster, Seattle East. Go ahead. Um, with that switch there, it might be easiest to have you line it reverse and let them sweep it out and then have it go back main. Seattle East, number seven, over. Number seven, over. Okay, you're instructed to hand operate the dual controlled switch at East Sky Comish, East EAST Sky Comish, uh, lining it for your route within your track and time, main to main, over. Finally, at 4.23 p.m., the lights of AMTK 203 West appear in the gathering dusk. The Empire Builder is over nine hours late, but is safely off the mountain. After a brief stop at the 5th Street Crossing, number 7 continues west for Seattle, soon to be back on signal indication, and the town of Skycomish prepares for another cold, dark winter's night.
Traveling on Highway 2 was slow and dangerous, with numerous downed trees and power lines. This big maple branch punched out the back window of the vehicle in front of the camera crew. Fortunately, no one was hurt in the incident, but it was a long drive back to the motel in Monroe, which, unlike Skykomish, still had electricity. When traveling at night through the Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest, you might keep your eyes open for Bigfoot. It's rumored he haunts a coffee shop on Highway 2 near Index. The coffee is good, hot, and welcome, especially on a night like tonight. Behind the marquee sign are lights of a car that has just got in the ditch, an all too common occurrence on this night. By daybreak the following morning, both Highway 2 and the railroad were closed over Stevens Pass. A roadblock was set up at milepost 32, just east of the community of Gold Bar. Only emergency personnel, railroad workers, and some locals were allowed beyond this point due to numerous downed trees and power lines, a danger that would continue even after the snow stopped falling. With more snow in the forecast, both the state of Washington and BNSF were not taking any chances. Both Amtrak's east and westbound Empire Builder were canceled, and other trains rerouted over nearby Stampede Pass and the Columbia River Gorge. We are at Gold Bar, elevation 200 feet. Another eastbound coal empty is tied down in the siding, like several other trains on the scenic subdivision. The only traffic moving for the next couple of days will be the crew shuttles out of Everett, like the approaching BNSF 9019. This three-unit set of EMDs is bound for Skykomish as it passes milepost 1756. Later in the afternoon, the trio returns west. Moving closer to the east switch of Gold Bar, the pair of SD-75Is we saw yesterday head past the crossing of Dorman Road, milepost 1754.9. Returning to Gold Bar two weeks later, a different coal train is tied down in the siding. BNSF 3149 is again seen as it powers the rock train bound for Skykomish. It has just retrieved a couple of ballast cars and the caboose out of a spur track at the west end of the siding.
Continuing our winter journey over Stevens Pass, dusk settles in at the east control point of Skykomish, near milepost 1731. The Seattle East Dispatcher has a meet planned, and within a few minutes, our first train arrives. BNSF 7959 drags a stack train through the 8,949-foot siding and pulls toward the east switch to clear the 5th Street crossing in town. After patiently waiting for a few minutes, the lights of BNSF 7061 West filter through the trees as the train reaches the bottom of the 2.2% descent from Scenic. You have been watching an excerpt from Winter on Stevens Pass, available on DVD, high-definition Blu-ray, and in stunning 4K with Vimeo On Demand. If you would like to purchase the full-length program, click on the link in the description below. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to watch more programs like this one added weekly. From all of us at 7idea Productions, thanks for watching.